Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Prilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 22 for the Manual of Non-CTO Interventions. This case illustrates the usual correlation between the RESTIC and hyperemic coronary physiology indices and also provides an illustration of how to treat an example of acute vessel closure. The patient was a middle-aged woman who presented with unstable angina. She had previous PCI of the right coronary artery and multiple comorbidities. Coronary angiography demonstrated a severe, heavily calcified lesion in the distal right coronary artery, distal to previously placed stents in the mid and proximal right coronary artery that had some instantary stenosis. She also had the intermediate lesions in the circumflex, as well as the mid-left anterior descending artery. The lesions were not particularly tight, however, they were long, and that is why we decided to assess them using coronary physiology. This was a very tortuous circumflex, and that's why we used one of the newer wires, the Opsons guide wire, that um, we were able to deliver all the way to the distal circumflex. We then did um, the resting PDPA that was 0.88, suggesting significant lesion with a cutoff usually used for PDPA of 0.91. To confirm it, we did uh, intracoronary adenosine injection and the FFR with adenosine was 0.76, confirming the resting index. We did the same for the LAD. Once again, there did not appear to be a very tight stenosis. However, there was disease in the proximal and mid LAD. And uh, the PDPA, once again, was 0.82, less than 0.91, suggesting significant stenosis. And the adenosine FFR was 0.70, essentially confirming the PDPA findings. And this is illustrative of the usual correlation between the resting and the hyperemic indices. We know that resting and hyperemic indices, um, there is um, some difference, but about 80% of the cases, the two measurements are concordant. And this is exactly what we found in this particular case. This is the example of previous studies showing that 80% um, correlation essentially of um, resting indices, PDPA with um, IFR. And there are multiple other indices, including the DPR, that um, show very similar correlation with IFR and PDPA. So in summary, we have here a patient who has uh, three vessel disease with severe heavily calcified distal arcade, long lesion in the circumflex and uh, diffuse disease in the proximal and middle AD. And we decided, because of the uh, extensive disease, to send the patient for coronary bypass graft surgery. However, the patient declined coronary bypass and she was subsequently referred for PCI the following day. Our plan was to perform initially PCI of the right coronary artery that seemed to be the more significant lesion and the more likely to be causing symptoms for the patient. We had um, a significant lesion and although it's not a CTO, it was close to that with uh, a length about 10 millimeters there's a bifurcation on the distal uh, edge of the lesion, and uh, there was um, collaterals from the septum appearing to filling the PDA, likely because it was such a severe lesion. We tried to advance a guide wire. We here have an 8 French GR4 guide catheter. We usually use AL1 for complex lesions, but quite frankly, we did not expect this to be extremely challenging, which was an underestimation on our part. We tried to wire with a regular um, workhorse Samurai RC guide wire, but we were unable to cross the distal RCA into the PDA. We then tried a Fielder FC polymer wire, and unfortunately, this caused acute closure of the distal right coronary artery. And this is one of the examples where the polymer wires may be more likely to dissect and cause acute vessel closure. Fortunately, the patient did have a very severe lesion to start with and remained stable without angina and without any hemodynamic compromise despite occlusion of the distal right coronary artery. However, we were still unable to advance an undergrade wire through that area of dissection. 
We obtained the contralateral femoral axis and placed the guide in the left main and then performed contralateral injections showing feeling of the PDA and the PLV. There was some septal and some epicardial collaterals. Given the failure to cross undegradely in the presence of a bifurcation distal to the distal cap, we decided to try some retrograde crossing as a bailout for the dissection. There were two septal branches. We had a hard time getting to the first one. That's why we advanced the one on the second septal branch and did uh, surfing using multiple wires, including the serum and the field RFC. But we were unable uh, to cross from the second septal. We then used a twin pass microcatheter. And by doing that, uh, we were actually we used a Supercross 120 microcatheter that is angulated. And doing that, we were able to advance a wire into the septal. Then we advanced a caravel. And through this, we advanced uh, a CN wire, which uh, actually did cross through a collateral all the way into the distal RCA and then going undergrade into the right posterior descending artery. This was confirmed by injection from the left. However, the problem was we could not advance the caravel despite being a small profile catheter through the collateral all the way to the PDA. And unfortunately, during these attempts, we lost the guide wire position. We tried once again to go back in. We, we used the Supercross 120. We entered the first septal, tried surfing, but now we actually had a disruption of the collateral we had uh, followed uh, previously and we were unable to connect essentially this time. So after multiple attempts, we decided to go back and try undergrade. Um, we used um, a trap liner to get a little better support and advance a Corsair microcatheter to the distal RCA. In doing that, we were then able to advance a field XT wire into the right posterior lateral branch. Intravascular ultrasounds did show that actually we were distally in the true lumen. However, we were unable to get into the PDA. We eventually um, used the Corsair again and multiple wires. And then with the Pilot 200, we were able to cross into the right posterior descending artery. What we're seeing here is some um, septal staining from the previous unsuccessful retrograde crossing attempts. These are usually of no consequence. And... Uh, Unless they cause large hematoma, there is no specific therapy required. The PDA was um, hard to cross. However, we used um, the side branch anchor technique with a balloon into the posterior lateral and a threader balloon, and then we were able to cross and predilate. We then exchanged uh, the Pilot 200 for the workhorse serum blue guide wire. And after doing that, then um, we uh, did a kissing um, a balloon inflation in the PDA and the PLV. Because we did have a significant disruption of both the PLV as well as the PDA, we decided to use a two-stand strategy for treating this bifurcation because we were concerned that if we used a provisional technique, we were very likely to lose the other branch. So we decided to use a DK crash technique which starts with uh, a stent into the side branch, in which case the posterior lateral branch, protruding into the main branch. The stent was deployed, and then um, it was crushed. But then uh, we did have uh, significant uh, difficulties rewiring into the um, right posterior lateral branch. We finally were able to do so, advancing a knuckle, pulling the wire back, and then advancing the wire through the struts um, of the crust stent. And then after we did that, um, we did uh, the first kissing balloon, which was challenging to advance the balloons in and out through the stents, but eventually it was successful. We then placed um, a stent in the main branch. We rewired into the right posterior lateral and did uh, the second kissing balloon inflation and then place stents in the mid as well as the proximal right coronary artery. A nice final result was achieved with TIMI3 flow, both in the PDA as well as the right posterior lateral branch. We did not do any intervention of the circumflex on the LAD since that was a fairly complex procedure requiring large radiation dose of almost 5 gray as well as high contrast volume. 
Several lessons from this case. Number one, the importance of coronary physiology for assessing intermediate lesions, and also illustration of uh, the usual concordance between the resting as well as the hyperemic indices. The second is the risk for acute vessel closure when trying to wire with polymer jacketed wires through tight lesions. The field RFC did cause acute vessel closure that um, fortunately did not cause hemodynamic compromise or angina because the patient had a high gray lesion to start with. We subsequently um, tried retrograde crossing. We were able to cross retrograde, but then unfortunately we were not able to advance the microcatheter and we lost the uh, wire position retrospectively. We should not have pushed as hard and potentially have left the retrograde wire as a marker to facilitate undergrade wiring. Third lesson, in case of bifurcations where there is extensive dissection in both branches, using a two-stand uh, upfront technique can be useful for um, uh, maintaining patency of both branches. And last, uh, when DK crash is performed, there can be challenges associated with rewiring the side brands, delivering balloons, and performing the kissing balloon inflations. So being persistent and using good support, in this particular case using a trap liner, that can lead to successful completion of the procedure. Thank you.